The Roosevelt couple are world-class figures. It is difficult to say which of them left a greater mark on history. President Franklin Roosevelt helped the country survive the Great Depression of the 30s and won World War II, the popular American version of events. Eleanor Roosevelt wrote the United Nations Declaration on Human Rights, not alone, but she headed the Human Rights Committee and was engaged in the development of the project. She is the only first lady among the wives of American presidents who served four consecutive terms, from 1933 to 1945. According to polls on the eve of the presidential elections in 1939, Eleanor's popular popularity was higher than that of her husband. Together, they represented tremendous power and authority as politicians, public figures, ideal spouses, and exemplary parents of six children. Americans were proud of the presidential couple, and as often happens in high-ranking families, state interests had to be put above personal ones. Their family was not spared the ordeal, which would later be called Monica Lewinsky Syndrome. After several years of marriage, Eleanor accidentally found a letter from her husband proving his close relationship with Secretary Lucy Page Mercer. The blow to self-esteem was serious. Then she told her friends, On this day, the world collapsed for me. Since childhood, Eleanor considered herself ugly. Her late beautiful mother called her a funny girl and taught her good manners that could compensate for external imperfections. From such care, the girl's complexes grew by leaps and bounds. Marriage to Franklin seemed to convince Eleanor that she could be liked and worthy of love. The appearance of a mistress meant a feminine fiasco for her. She immediately proposed a divorce. But her husband's political career was already gaining momentum. The divorce process would have lowered his ratings. It is unlikely that Eleanor cared about her husband's reputation. She would have lived without him, since an active, independent character and inheritance were an excellent springboard for self a worthwhile life. But children have already been born in the family. In addition, Franklin apologized and promised to break up with Lucy. For complete peace of mind, Eleanor fired her secretary. Two years later, the girl got married. Peace in the family did not mean happiness. Biographers claim that since then, the Roosevelt couple have slept in different beds. Eleanor's public activities focused on the protection of women's rights. She and her friends bought a girls' school, worked there as a deputy director, and taught history, in addition to working at the White House and the Red Cross. Meanwhile, the story with Lucy is not over. Almost half a century later, she found out that her husband had been in a relationship with his longtime mistress all this time. In April 1945, Eleanor was in one of the shops in Washington when she received a call and was asked to come to the White House immediately. On the spot, she learned that her husband had died of a cerebral hemorrhage. It was no less a shock to see Lucy next to the late president. By that time, she was widowed. Eleanor understood that since she and her husband actually live separately, he is dating someone. With anyone but Lucy, an old wound has opened. The public was informed of the only detail. Death occurred on vacation, when the president posed for the artist. Eleanor understood perfectly well that it was impossible to take rubbish out of the hut. It would be short-sighted to disappoint an entire nation in conditions when there was still war. Later, she told friends, I can forgive, I can't forget. After the funeral, Madame Roosevelt ordered that the last portrait of Franklin be sent to a rival, so that she remembers too. The presidential couple so carefully concealed an old family conflict that information about Lucy leaked to the press only 20 years after Roosevelt's death, the version of a contract killing was considered, accomplices were searched. And in 1980, the letters of the late Lorena Hickok, a journalist who worked in the White House during the Roosevelt administration, were published. Their addressee is Eleanor Roosevelt. It became obvious from the letters that the women were close not only ideologically and spiritually. They met during the presidential election in 1932. In 1933, Roosevelt became the head of the White House. Eleanor moved there and brought her friend. She even had her own room there. Lorena was a thick-set, masculine woman with no signs of feminine attractiveness. The ladies often traveled together and exchanged significant gifts. Eleanor gave her friend a car. Lorena presented her with a sapphire ring. For outsiders, the gift looked like a wedding anniversary present. Madame Roosevelt did not like jewelry, but she wore this ring all the time. Her letter to Lauren has been preserved.
My beloved, I want to hug you and hold you tight. Your ring brings me relief. When I look at it, I think you love me, otherwise I wouldn't be wearing it. In response, I read, I can't kiss you, so when I fall asleep and wake up, I kiss your picture. In 35 years of dating, they wrote 2,300 letters to each other. Franklin suspected something, asked to expel Lauren from the White House, but Eleanor flatly refused. After Roosevelt's death, their relationship somehow deteriorated. The friends lived together for only a year. Lauren died in 1968. Eleanor was five years earlier. She outlived her husband by 17 years. Few people knew that she had leukemia. Franklin and Eleanor Roosevelt are considered one of the most interesting couples in American history. We present to your attention a few facts about this presidential couple that you may not be familiar with. Franklin Roosevelt was related to 11 other presidents. The famous Roosevelt family tree does not end at the White House. He was also associated with several other historical figures, including Winston Churchill, Douglas MacArthur, and two famous leaders of the Confederate States of America, Jefferson Davis and Robert E. Lee. Franklin Delano Roosevelt was an avid stamp collector. Roosevelt's passion for stamps began when he was a young child and lasted his entire life, resulting in 1.2 million stamps. Wherever he went, his set of albums rode with him in a special trunk. Although Roosevelt himself admitted that the collection was large but not very valuable, he had several unique works created especially for him by the heads of foreign states. Franklin Roosevelt narrowly escaped death on his way to the Turan Conference. The U.S. William D. Porter turned out to be the unluckiest ship in the history of the United States Navy. It was commissioned in 1943. His first assignment was to escort several other ships, including the battleship U.S. Iowa, as they crossed the Atlantic Ocean. Who was on board the Iowa? President Roosevelt, Secretary of State Cordell Hull, and several senior military officials on their way to the top-secret summit in Iran with Joseph Stalin and Winston Churchill. <laughs>